Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Local Chat. I'm your host, Will Crosby. It's episode 95. It's a sunny 75 out there. Traffic a little light on the 405, and we're coming down cruising real good. Joining me this week in the helicopter, it's Ian Gibson. Two things. What are we going to do when we get to episode 911? And number two, I have a Jehovah's Witness update. How's it going, oh Jason? My you, God. You, 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 you can't skip the, his beautiful <laughs> intro like that. <laughs> You gotta be like, I, I'm, I'm getting rained on up here. It's, it's, it's crazy. The drizzle. It's reaching the helicopter. Oh shit! <laughs> man, on the street. Like that. Come on, Ian. Jason, come is on, here. man. Uh, Ian famously does not like participating in bits that aren't his. Um, oh, he'll railroad them. See if like Chris was here or Zach or like a chimpanzee, they would play along. <laughs> I mean, like I, I would play along, but I feel like 9/11 is the trump card. Right. Like that trumps everything. If you've got a 9-11 joke, you got to locked and loaded. You got to pull the trigger, baby. Don't no, no matter the situation. I just want you on like whose line is it anyways? And they're like, uh, you're a giraffe in a store. 9-11. I just pictured you're at a funeral and you look down to the tombstone and the birth date is September 11th. You're just like, huh. Huh. You're just like looking around like, I gotta fucking say something. Somebody doesn't say something. I'm gonna drop one. <laughs> you know, all 11 of your kids are gonna be born on my Oh my I'm telling you god, right I would love that. They're all, they're all all 11 of them and they're all named 9 in some different ways. <laughs> oh my so. god. Yeah, in different languages. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, my, okay, my aunt and uncle, they're crazy religious oh, and they no. have six they have six kids. And um, their names all start with J, and it took me years to realize it's because of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because of jelly. <laughs> They're really no. in the jelly. Speaking of um, Jesus, I, I really do have a Jehovah's Witness yes, update. Would you like you to hear You can give it? us, yes. We, we'll all need right. a, to compile all the Jehovah's Witness stories. So, um, Jason, just to bring you up to speed, COVID, right? Jehovah's Witness, sure, stopped, right. they stopped going door to door during COVID. Uh, at least in Maryland, they did. And they started sending out handwritten letters instead. And so we got a handwritten letter when we lived in Baltimore. And it's it was it was like giving the Jehovah's Witness spiel. It was like a two and a half page handwritten letter. But you could also tell it was kind of from a template. <laughs> My fiance, Maggie, reads the letter and she handwrites a reply. <laughs> <laughs> and I happened to get the reply before she sends it out. And I read it out loud on stream. And she heard me and she was not happy. And so we have a string clip of her showing up behind me and smacking me in the head while I'm reading her Jehovah's Witness letter. Um, <laughs> fast forward. We now live in Florida. I was oh. out a couple weekends ago and I come back and Maggie said, oh, you missed the Jehovah's Witness came by. And I was like, oh, they're going back door to door. And she goes, no, they came to say hello because of my letter. And I was like, <gasps> what do you mean? We have moved. And she goes, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. But they knew my name and they knew your name and they were coming to say thank you for the letter. And I was just like, <laughs> they're tracking us <laughs> like we're in a fucking database now. And How they, do they like, have your new now, address? Th that's the thing. Is This is not a database like this name and address. This is a database like we have to find this person, run it against the registry, pull the fucking PIs in. We're getting their new address. And we're now we're now we're fucking registered uh, witnesses. I get I don't I don't I we're I'm terrified, man, because because the, the funny thing was this happened. And then, like I was like, oh, my God, do you remember a week before? And we went to my sister's like kids soccer game and there was Jehovah Witness at a table there. And I was like, I'm terrified oh now of them because we are literally on a list with with <laughs> our name and our previous address and our current address. And it's terrifying. They're like replicants. They're all around. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 gonna they're gonna recommend you go to heaven though. It's great. It's like He's they live. God. You gotta put the glasses on. <laughs> you can see all the oh Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Terrific. Oh, I haven't. Will? I'm still looking. Will? I'm sorry. Why what? are you dressed up like Mario right now? I. You know. I realized that as we were as we start. I, I do. <laughs> I do. Literally have my Mario costume right here. <laughs> But uh, I bought this hat at a train show, and then I wore the shirt, and it was just a 
misunderstanding. Um, uh, speaking of Mario, let's talk about video games. Uh, I played some video games this week. I finished three video games this week. Uh, wow. All three of them extremely good. Uh, I finished Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones. Hey. Um, I am now very much into Fire Emblem. Um, you played one game. Great. It's great. <laughs> very good. I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you to expand. We're good. <laughs> you it's know, it's very it's, um, good. It's funny because I was thinking about this the other day and how you were all like, XCOM is the greatest game of all time, etc. And then now you're into Fire Emblem. And I was like, it's so weird because I didn't really think of it, but I guess XCOM kind of is a gateway drug into tactical games for people that typically totally. don't play turn-based tactical games. Uh, the one good thing about XCOM, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, the, so Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, I've been talking about it a lot, but uh, the last two missions took me a while. I was like trying to get them right and go through like I I never there's safe states on the analog pocket and I use them for safety but I never actually ended up using any of them I would just restart the mission and like think it through again but those last couple of missions are really hard they like have yeah. you fight the boss and then he, darkling he, woods is really hard yeah yeah he dies and then he resurrects with twice as much health yeah, um, that's also I thank god for Mur the dragon lady she is uh the most incredible character in that game, other than Garrick, and other yes! than <laughs> Garrick, my boy. We love, we love Garrick. He um, kills a demon with his bare hands. I I think I forget. He might have killed. I think he killed the. Uh, he uses Garm, or God. he could use Adhuma, whichever one. Yeah, it's so good. I like it. You should play Fire on the Sacred Stones. I'm trying I to decide. Play this fucking game now. Who's your favorite <laughs> character? Too much on my list. Who's your favorite God. character? Will. Besides Garrick and Mur, uh, besides Garrick, probably yeah. Mur. And besides, besides those two, any uh, any other additional characters? What's your? Oh, um, who else? Innis, I really like. Okay. Seth, obviously, the tank of the series. <laughs> um, Seth. Seth Garcia? is pretty broken. Yeah. You like Garcia? Okay. I what love Garcia. Names? Ross yeah, is great. a piece of shit. I don't like Ross. Ross? Um, yeah, I'm Ross is Garcia's oh, son. You're saying, you're saying all these names, but all I can think about is that tweet being yeah. like about about how the main character of Dune is named Paul. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> yeah. like, I, Fire Emblem's got to have fancier names than this. Like, Garrick, hell yeah. Love it. You know, Paul, uh, like, what did you say, Ross? Uh, not, not so much. <laughs> Get a little more friends creator. There's, there's like 600 characters now, so there's almost every name. Like, there's there's a bunch of like plain names too. Although I wonder, I wonder how much of this is like the Japanese idea of like, oh, there's, Ross. There's, there's a like, Ross. One of the one of my favorite characters <laughs> named Ralph. Such a foreign name. He yeah. has a one line in one game. All he does is say, "I'm here to kill people," and he's that's it. That's like all <laughs> he fucking does, and this is just <laughs> Ralph. He's Love super it. good too. It's crazy. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other uh, uh, Molder for sure. Molder the Boulder. Okay. Shout out to the porn Molder. stash, by the way. Uh, Bishop yeah. Boulder. Oh, who looks uh, like a child in his animations, and then up yeah. close, he's just like a a predator with a huge porn <laughs> stash. Uh, to play you, this game. You gotta you gotta play probably seven is it's like sister game. So that's the yeah. Even I though, guess I'll play seven. I'd probably stick with the GBA ones while you're playing them, is what I would yeah, say. Yeah, I think so, too. I like my pocket, and I'm in a pocket mood, and which means I haven't touched my Steam Deck because I'm just playing on the pocket when I mm -hmm. need to go to bed and need something. So, uh, yeah, I think I might I might play that. Uh, I, I have Seven. Path of Radiance ready to go. You could do that, too, yeah. But uh, I'm worried that it might be a little different. You could do Seven to Path or... Path of Radiance is also longer too, but it's my favorite yeah. one. But I think I'm gonna pause because I was trying to get the GameCube emulators working, uh, and I had ripped my copy of Luigi's Mansion, and it was running real rough on the Steam Deck, and so I basically looked it up, and everyone's like, it has the power to do it, but Dolphin uh, developers have not looked at porting it to the. So you're just running the Linux version. You're not running the like Steam Deck Fair. specific version. So it was like mm -hmm. very much like, hey, your controller's not connecting now. It is connecting. Here's half of Luigi's Mansion. So once that's up and running, or the game uh, GameCube loader comes back in stock on the internet, whichever happens first uh, is when I will play uh, Path of Radiance because I'm not paying three hundred dollars for a copy of don't that do game. That, yeah. don't <laughs> do no, that. no, 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 don't <laughs> ever. Don't uh, ever do that. 
Yeah. Uh, so anyways, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, out of the way, kablamo. Thank God. Up next. We've converted uh, another one. Uh, Tinykin. Played okay. this off of Ian's recommendation. Ian. S- strong Gibson. game of the year contender. Strong. Ian like, Gibson. maybe not number one, top three. Just a solid Drive ass game. Drive with Tinykin. Ian Gibson. S- I'm going to say this once, so listen. Tinykin is the game of the year. That game is really? so good. <laughs> it's very good. It's like it's 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 one of those games where like you look at it and you go, look, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not doing anything new, oh my God, but it's so doing funny. something that not a lot of games are doing. And it does it to fucking like perfection in the perfect yes. little I don't want to call it tiny package, but the perfect little like six hour package. It's it just, is so perfect. I almost have all the achievements. I'm like three pollen on each level away from from like two of the levels. I just have to find mm-hmm. them. Uh, and I have to talk to one guy in all the places. Uh, but I cleaned up good in that game. Uh, the music in oh. that game is out of okay. this world. My problem though is that there's not enough of it. I want to say like 30, 40 minutes into a level, I would be like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this song. I am listening to it on Spotify. I am... I am yeah, that's showering fine. to it. So the the thing I like about the music the most is it changes throughout the level. Like as you get yeah, higher up, yeah. it gets a little like fancier and operatic. As you get to the bottom, it changes. When you go inside the piano in one of the levels, it switches to just the piano version of it. When you go inside the guitar, it changes to a guitar version of it. And not just like a guitar version of the song, but like made for guitar version. So they're not just yeah. switching instruments, but they're switching the play style. When you walk into the church, the all the people start singing along to it. It's like there's so many different areas of different music. And the first level is the strongest of all the music. It has all those different playthroughs or uh, play versions of it. The other ones less so, but they still change from your height. And like when you go inside buildings, it's like a little muted, uh, which is mm-hmm. interesting. But the themes for each of the rooms of the house are really cool. Um as far as I can tell, it's just like Pikmin. I still haven't played Pikmin, but we talked about this last week. What? It's uh, this guy, it's, man. I know, right? You it's, you missed it. Will did one of his classic things where I was like, "Do you know what Pikmin in is?" And Will was like, "No, I don't know." And I was like, "You told me you were watching Karen play it, and you yeah, you watching Karen. I she was miles away. Um, I just didn't know the mechanics of it, and that's kind of what you were asking." Uh, yeah, anyways, fair. Tinykin Game Pass, go play it. It it was oh, it's so good. I really, 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 really liked it. I could not stop playing it. I stayed up way past my bedtime a couple times, uh, and I was scolded by the teacher. Um, so Tinykin. Okay, uh, I'm gonna skip one of these, or I'm gonna skip two of these, uh, and then Immortality. I started with Karen last night. We were just sitting on the couch. So mm-hmm. Immortality, you were uh. Oh, I'm going to explain okay. to you I what I knew about Immortality, which is an FMV game where you look through clips of three movies and you click on things, you pause it and you click on things within the movie to send you to other clips and you're trying to figure out what happened to this actress. I forget her name, Maria or something. What I didn't know is that this game is fucking crazy and there's like spirits. D- and wait a minute. There's boobs everywhere in that game, yeah, right? You didn't you didn't know because like Zach posted in the Discord. I think Zach talked about yeah, it. Yeah, they played it. Yeah, they played it on like, local chat. And it's all over it's all over Twitter. People just being like, this game needs trigger warnings, and like we don't know if we can stream it. And like, holy shit, this game is like should be I don't want to say should be, but it's like basically adults only. I don't know how they didn't get rated, you know. No, sorry, that's not what I'm saying. I know all that. I'm saying oh, okay. I thought this movie was me looking through footage. To figure out how this girl died. Not me yeah. looking through footage and things are talking to me through the footage and altering the footage and having me rewind and glitch to watch scenes acted out by these benevolent creatures that are trying to talk to me through the fourth Is this wall. A spoiler? I don't know, but it's <laughs> wild. I did not know that happened. I like, man, I want to play this game, but part of it is also like I know that it's trying to be artsy and I feel like I I'm all for artsy movies, but I feel like I'm going to be playing it. And I'm going to have these moments where I'm just like, I want to just put the controller down and just watch this movie, you know, so because you, it's too good, you know, so that like, was that's happening my with us. 
it it looks like a set, there's a 60s, 70s, and 90s. It they look like they were shot then. They did such That's an amazing cool. job. The camera angles are like 70s movies. The audio is it's very room tony. It's wonderful. Um, Hell yeah! So I started booted up the game. You get one clip, and we're just watching it. And Karen's like, "What's going on?" I was like, "I don't know." So I'm just clicking through clips, and we played for maybe two hours. And at the end of it, we knew the distinct characters in each clip. We knew the guys. We would be like, mm-hmm. "Oh, let's click on that. Let's click on that. Let's follow their story." And it just like really meshed and came together so well. I was gobsmacked at how well it came together. Uh, so we haven't finished it yet. Smacked I'm gonna keep it. playing it. Uh, it's on Game Pass, which I didn't know. Uh, so I just pulled it up and played it. It took me maybe 30 minutes to get into. So I, try to so avoid it. I was like, oh, my God, curse. this guy's insane. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I highly recommend checking out. It's like you just got to wait for a little bit to click uh, and like for some weird stuff to happen. But, boy, I was not expecting any of that when it happened. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I clicked off of my thing here. Um, and then finally, uh, I played this game called Stay Out of the House, which is like a horror game. Uh, it's by this puppet something. They're like known for these types of games, but I had never played them before. Low poly. Uh, I played the prologue chapter where you were running a gas station late at night and you know, you're going to be kidnapped as the player, but the, obviously the character doesn't know that. And you have to do these jobs late at night by yourself in like a uh, gas station. And it while well, like a van creepily draw drives by. And then each person who comes in, you're like, is this the guy who's going to try to kidnap me? Um, that's as much as I played of it before I cried. Uh, absolutely terrifying. Do not. I recommend it for anyone who likes scary things, but I do not recommend it to Ian because you will pass out from paranoia. Can't uh, handle it. Absolutely wild. Oh, boy. That is everything I play this week, minus a game. But I'm gonna let someone else talk about the game. But first, Jason, are there any games you played this yes, week you wanted to I talk didn't mark about? it down because I was in the middle of playing. I've been playing this game. It's like a forty to fifty hour like strategy RPG. We were just talking about it. Ironically, Fire Emblem. No, it's sim- it's. I I I say there's a lot of games that are similar to Fire Emblem. This is probably the closest I've had to a game be similar to Fire Emblem, a specific one, and it's. It's the closest to three houses that you'll ever see, which is good and bad because like I have some beef with three houses, but not beef with three houses. Same. Uh, it's Lost a, a, a Dalians uh, is what I've been playing, and I played it. I've played this game seven hours a day for like the last five Ooh. or six. Yeah, it's it's like nuts. wow, it's a lot and of I've chocolate been, milk. That's a lot of chocolate milk, a lot of streams. I've been playing it sometimes like up until four in the morning. I don't have somebody to yell at me though, so thank God. Yeah. Uh, no teacher's gonna tell on me, so I just go to bed at like four thirty in the morning. <laughs> Except the chocolate milk. It started the chocolate milk around two a.m. the other day. It's hours, yeah. But I put it's like a forty-hour game. I'm on chapter like eighteen out of twenty-seven, and there's a long fucking game. And I'm I'm basically the crux of it is it's like a medieval version of Fire Emblem. And I know it sounds really weird, but it's not like rooted in anime. It's rooted in like tries to be like more like realistic with it. So like they have like armor like types or something like that. Uh, Mm -hmm. weapon types that like beat armor so like for rock paper scissors instead of like weapons it's based off armor and you have like spells that like affect the environment like burn bushes freeze lakes electrify lakes or something like that so it's super cool oh this Uh, looks awesome yeah it's it's actually video of it right now it's not that expensive right now too uh it's worth at least taking a look at in terms of like see if it, it would vibe with you i would say like i said it's it's similar to three houses because Unlike Fire Emblem, where you go from like mission to mission to mission and other ones, uh, this one has like a, a base camp that you do. And you do like stuff around the base camp, like RPG, like to build your bonds and supports with some units and stuff. Unlock additional items by like completing like many like fetch quests and stuff, which is good and bad. Uh, it gets and gets a little tedious when the guy says, run and go get this book, give it to this guy. You have to do that. You could skip all the story if you want to, but the story is actually pretty good. And good voice acting as well. So I've been pretty happy with it, uh, except until today, where I'm playing <laughs> on hardest difficulty and also playing on mad like madness mode because that's what I do when I first play a game. I don't know why. Instead of playing all the way through it, I just play on the highest difficulty to see like what's what's up. And there's a mission that I don't think they play tested too too well, and I'm having a long struggle with it. So I was looking up ways to beat it. 
uh before i that's why i was mainly super focused uh <sighs> wow yeah hopefully but it's super good i like it and it's a it's a it's a it's a fire emblem that or three houses that's a little bit more simplified which is pretty good um so if you're if i think three houses is really complicated and there's some problems with it that i have that can be really lengthy and sometimes um there's some complications with it instead of just playing fire emblem yes yeah. yeah. i'm not playing that i'm playing like persona which is aggravating like, um like a bad persona so, yeah. yeah so like I never want to see that fishing game in any other fucking game ever again, that Fire Emblem fishing game. So when an Engage comes out, don't put that fishing game in. When Ga- Engage is more traditional, right? I'm hoping. I'm hoping that that Me too. is... I'm hoping it's going to be back to kind of like a little bit more chapter to chapter. There is a base camp in it, but I'm hoping it's not as... Since yeah. it's, it's not a school, I, I'm hoping you just you just hang out there. I'm I'm with you. I dropped three houses. I bought it when it came out and I dropped it two hours in. I was like, I was like, I it's don't want to do this. I don't want to do the school shit and the school shit was not fun. And I was like, just give me like, like the ones before it where you yeah, had you the base chapter, camp and you could, do a, yeah. Yeah, you could do a little bit and it was cool. And then you go back yep. into the battle. That was fucking that's, great. That's yeah. why I didn't. That's why I suggested to Will to not start with that. Ease him yeah. into it so he doesn't go this. I just had a friend who was playing. I was like, oh, this is overwhelming as hell. I was like, yeah, if it's if it's your first Fire Emblem game. It's not like any other ones yeah. like at all. Mm. It doesn't play like them. So ease into it's, it, I would say um this is a game I, this game is a lot more simplistic than this too so this is another way you could look into it i like it a lot it's a little bit more realistic and the story takes after traditional like uh kind of like game of thronesy so it's kind of cool uh, in that respect oh, okay yeah yeah it, it, it seems almost like dragon's dogma ish a little yeah. bit because you're like fighting these big beasts and stuff mm-hmm. yeah there's um, there's beast like battles in that way you have to like hit them from this side with this weapon and then you like turn them and then you can hit them with like another effective weapon from the bottom side and it does like effective damage so you like cycle around them for it's pretty cool the beast boat fighting in that um so. not to uh delay the com or bel- uh, continue the conversation in the wrong direction um fire emblem awakenings awakens awakenings yes yeah, is that good? That's, that's, a, that's good. Uh, I here's the thing about that game. I I have my own. Pro, I, I could go on about it. The short of it is, it's a great one to start the series off as well, because yes. it's 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 another one that like it eases you into mechanics that are in future games. The one right behind mm-hmm. it, I wouldn't start with. I would start with this one. It's the same with the GBA ones. I told you there. Fire Emblem is done in like sections, so you play mm-hmm. them by like this one's this is this era play it this one first and it helps you like understand it awakening is that for like the newer yeah. gens gotcha yeah, helps I, you I, I heard yeah. they were talking about with the new game that the weapon triangle is coming back and i was like yes it went away i love the weapon it, triangle it yeah it did when did when did it go it went away only in three houses, three houses. Wasn't it in, yeah. yeah that's fucking weird that's i want to get that staple. tattooed on me the i know weapon. It's it's yeah. uh, swords are better than axes and axes do lances and lances do swords. Yeah. And sometimes there's a magic weapon triangle on top of it. It gets really confusing sometimes. So yeah. Awakening uh, but, was my was my first. And that was yeah. that was that's a lot of people's first of the series. Usually the yeah. first are usually awakening seven. And sometimes nowadays it's actually three houses because people are like, oh, my God, like a, a popular switch game. So. I mean, Some it's hard to go from three houses and go backwards because you're losing a lot of mechanics that are yeah, in like but older they're ones. bad mechanics. So <laughs> some some are good and some are bad. It's just like I just wish that it played more like I when I'm playing a Fire Emblem game, I want to get straight yeah. into it. Yeah, I can yeah. grind these games out like I want to beat this mission to mission to mission. I can't yeah. do that with three houses as easily. I don't I don't want to run around a castle talking to people and I don't doing no. chores. And that, other people like that. I don't like it as much. And that, so you, I, the reason I like this game that I'm playing right now is because, A, it's fresh. I haven't seen the story. And, B, I can skip a lot of this stuff if I'm not, you know. I don't think you can do that as easily with three houses. So, yeah. So maybe I'll play seven. I, I think I'd I'll play seven, seven next. next. I would. And play then I'll do next. the game cubes. Uh, yeah, I'll do it because it's not a series that I'm like, oh, I got to go consume it all right now. Like, yeah. I know I can take my time with it. So I might as well do it in an order that will not make me like hate that i'm missing things you know yeah um, just i think awake. seven is literally the same game except just different units it's it's eight but just like a different story and different units you'll like they plays the exact same and i play it That's on easy it, i get it you done. can yeah you can actually so you i i'm pretty sure i did eight on is there normal 
There is a normal. Yeah, I don't think there's an easy. I, I don't tend to choose easy in games. I choose yeah. usually whatever it lands on. I choose normally. Maybe I should choose. Um, I should maybe chose easy for the game I'm playing right now, so I could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I I do want to go back to the older fire emblems, but was there a point where perma death? Let me put it this way: perma death of characters, as in they yes. die in the battle, they're dead. Yes. yes. It's my understanding that there was a point where that was always in the series and then they 100%. added an option. When, when was that option added? 1 to uh, 12, permadeath was permanently in the game. 13 oh. is Awakening. You could do, I believe, casual slash like Phoenix mode. Yes. That's See, I, I prefer it that way because I don't want to take that's it too fine. seriously. I, so I always tell people play the way you want to play. Yeah. See, I so like if I'm the... going to go back, I'll probably just save scum. Yeah. I like yeah. the risk of losing someone. I, I think it brings another challenge that you're trying to save somebody. If you could just run people in to die, sometimes you could just do like something really risky and then just like yeah, it's suicide not like, mission and kill like everybody. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's not no, like no, if I, they I die, agree. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. be like yeah. mad or something. It's like the thrill of can I save them? You know? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. Just for me, I don't like the added anxiety yeah. that it brings. Also, yeah. it could be like a waste of time. Like I don't want to restart after like losing this idiot. So oh, that's why I play oh, on I'm restarting. I play on Iron Man regardless nowadays just because now I don't even restart if they die. I'm like, well, my playthrough is just gone yeah. without like I'm not going to do the chapter again. Like F that dude. Yeah. So it did okay. suck at the end of eight when they're like telling everyone stories and it's just like they died. They died. And you're just like, <laughs> did somebody die in yours? I lost three people. Three Wait, people. really? Yeah, That's they insane. were mostly like it was like I forget. It was Dwalin. Is Dwalin? Is that Dwar Dwarma? Dwarma. Where Dwa with Larakel, Dos Doslin. Doslin. It's Dosla. Dosla. It's I lost Dosla. him late. The beard guy. Was, uh, he was the second to last mission he died on. <laughs> no, no, it was the last mission he died on, and I was so <laughs> pissed off that I wasn't completing the mission that yeah, I just let the him beard die. guy. He's a beard dude. No, it was the second to last mission, and then uh, or I, oh, sorry, it was the first stage of the last mission. Ian, this guy um, has a green mountain man beard. Ooh, yeah, it's incredible. Green. Ooh. And then I lost I lost a magician uh at some point. E it's it was someone Ewan, I lost Ewan or something. Because I didn't realize when someone dies, they say their little thing in the battle, but then it auto exits. It doesn't let you button you don't button through it. Oh, okay. You didn't even so, realize he died. I didn't realize he died because I must have not been paying attention. <laughs> and like two missions later, I'm like, fuck, where's this guy? Um which kind of pissed me off. You didn't even bury him. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even bury him. We just left his bones. We just out. left him in the mountains. <laughs> Piece of shit. Um, yeah, that game's great. Uh, Ian Gibson. Oh, sorry, Hi. Jason. Is that everything you've played? No, that's, I, like I said, I I think it's worth a look. And right now, it's a decent price. And it's an, it, the crazy thing is, this is this company's first game. I was like, okay, like they got a oh. lot of good like talent. Oh, they did a great job. So even even if it didn't do like, it's not perfect. It's obviously got some flaws. Like I said, I already mentioned, I'm stuck on this mission. Hopefully that. I don't know if it's like a patch or something like that. Like, I don't know. It's but they did a great job so far. So I I think this is a, a place to look out for if they're if they're going to keep making games or keep in this realm, I guess. So, yeah, honestly, 35 bucks is not bad for. Uh, yeah, getting that many hours. I, I thought yeah, so. Totally. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Nice. Uh, Ian, make me happy. Let's talk about a game. Hi, uh, so I'm still playing uh, Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope I'm probably four or five hours into it now. This is just turn based strategy uh, episode here. Um, this game's still great. Uh, they actually like changed a lot from the first game. I, I kind of mentioned it briefly last time, but it's kind of surprising you boot up a sequel and you figure it's just going to be more levels and a couple more characters. But they actually changed some of the core mechanics and stuff. It's still just a lot of fun, um, like really good like turn-based combat they the they did this with the first one but it's worth calling out again like they don't take anything in that genre for granted and they mix things up where they can so for example um like movement of the character it's not like there is a move phase and then an attack phase and it's not like like th there are kind of grids but it's not like oh i have four movements so i can move here it's like you have a range and you could just run around doing whatever the fuck you want in that range. And then Damn. as soon as you shoot, that's when your move is over wherever you are. But but there's things you can do that that 
don't end your movement. So you, so you can like slide tackle an enemy to do some damage. That's called a dash. Yeah. So you could like you could run over over here, slide tackle this guy, move over here and stop. Switch to your other character, have your other character come to where you are, do a team jump so they get into a better position, switch back to the first guy, move him somewhere else behind cover, and then take the shot. So it's not like this is like very definitive move phase where it's like, where are you moving? You are now there. Like there's so much you can do in that movement and so much flexibility where you can like. I, I, this is going to sound weird, but in my head, I think of it as making the characters kiss where like like if if Luigi and Mario are on like really far sides of the map. Um, but their movement circle like just barely overlaps, you can have Luigi like run completely out of cover, get Mario over there and he jumps and it doesn't count as Luigi's move because it's inside his range. So then he can just move back. Like it just once you start to realize that they're like mixing up like these turn based strategy staples, you're like, wait, I can really do like a lot more attacks and a lot more movement shenanigans here. Mm. And it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I there are some problems I have with the game. Number one is that um, it's an Ubisoft game. So there are parts of it that feel like an Ubisoft game. Um, so, for example, the way the game is structured is that you kind of go to these like semi it's kind of like Odyssey, right? So you have like these areas or worlds or hubs and you you can they're like semi open. Mm -hmm. So you're like running with your party around and being like, let me go over here. There's a, some guy to talk to. Let me go over here. There's a battle. But then there's also always like a, like a main path that will take you through the story battles. But then there's other collectibles around for you to run around on, like on an island or like a, a, an icy mountaintop. Um, but that being said, when you are moving around with your party, it feels like an it feels like a, an Ubisoft game, and by that I mean the movement doesn't feel great. It's a little bit slow. It's just like a tiny bit sluggish. Like it doesn't have that Nintendo polish of like you're a character running around a 3D world. Like it just doesn't feel as good. Mm. Um, How do you feel about the but, voice acting in it? It's pretty good. So my <laughs> only problem is so there's two there's two voice acting ways they do it. So there's your your I forget what the name is. It's like Beepo or something, which is like your it's Beepo. the Roomba. Basically, it's the root. Oh, so the yeah. lore, the lore, I forget, is something about like real world, like Roomba meets like a Mario toy meets like a rabid toy. And then they get sucked into the fake world and they get crossed and merged. That's the storyline from the first game. So okay. you basically have this like magic Roomba that is like leading your party. Their lines are fully voiced and they're not that good. That's that's like another Ubisoft thing where it's like the lines are like they're OK, but they're not amazing. Um, all their lines are fully voiced and they're kind of annoying. But then all the rabbits have yes. <laughs> like like if they have if they have two sentences to say, they'll just say like the first couple words. But then they also have like I think they're called barks in, in video game development yes. where they're just like shout things out. And I wish I could remember some of them. But honestly, like 90 percent. Rabbit of them Mario. Rabbit are Mario. So good. Yeah, they're really good. Um, and then like uh, rabid um, rabid peach, who's the healer, like when she does her major heal ability, she like holds up her phone and she just like hits the heart button and it goes like <laughs> boom, and she goes, she says something like something like uh, healed you. Like it's like this little like, here's a heart. <laughs> like it's just like this. I can't remember, but it's just it's like the perfect like little bark that adds just a little bit of flavor. And you're like, I think I like the, I think I like the rabbit hybrids Rab more than I do the Nintendo character. Rabbit Mario says when he opens a chest, this is the, this is the best day of my life. Like yes, it's something. Yes. It's it's ridiculous. It's really good. So that's the thing is that like it's 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 a continuation of the solid first game. Um, but one of the other qualms I have with it, though, is it's OK. It's not quite as bad as three houses, but you spend probably about half the time in the open world, the semi open world, which I said is not that good. And then even when you get in the battles, the battles don't last more than 10, 15 minutes. And, and I it's not that They're I short, want these battles. Yeah. I don't want them to last an hour, but there are some of them. Sometimes I just want to be like, let me like really get into this and get into a groove because most of the time it feels like as I'm getting into a groove, it's like, boom, I wipe out the enemy team and that's the end of it. And and I just wish the variety. I don't want to say the variety. I just wish the duration of the battles varied a little bit more. Um, it it, it they just it, as long as the map design is good in that game too, because you like you need like height stuff yeah. to like use the 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 jump or whatever, get height for like Luigi or like there's obstacles so you can like fight around for like Edge and Mario and stuff. So yeah, that's I I don't know. It depends on the level design for that kind of game too as well. 
Yeah. And it's it's pretty fun. I will just say, though, I I'm not as wowed with this game as I was the first one. And it's nothing against it being a sequel as much as it is as it is doing new. It's it's not a game of the year nominee for me because <gasps> that first one was so was so different and had so much going against it. And it hits so fucking hard that even though I think the second one is a better than the first one, the second one is just not as much of a uh, of an oddity like like a a, a darling as the mm-hmm. first one. So I'm still having fun with it, but I'm I'm slowly I, I don't even think I'll finish it. I've been having fun, but um, another game I tried Marvel Snap. You guys know what Marvel Snap is? I've only heard brief things about it, but I know there's like three lanes and you have to like stop people from like going down. Is that it? Correct? Or something like uh, that? No, it's a little different. Stop, don't go down. Don't stop go down, that. please. That's what Dota's are. <laughs> it's a crossing guard simulator. Um, so, uh, Mar- look, I don't know what it is, but lately I guess I'm just very susceptible to like advertising and word of mouth campaigns because there was a day this week when like it seemed like everybody on Twitter was either talking about it was either like blatant Marvel snap advertising or people being like, wow, I love Marvel. And so of course I'm playing Marvel snap. And it was like, of course you are, you fucking shithead. And then there was people who were like, I don't like Marvel, but why can't I stop playing this game? And I'm like, fuck. And so finally I was like, fuck. And I installed it and I played it for like 30 minutes. So it's a collectible card game for your phone. The basic premise is that, uh, there are three, they call them cities or locations, but I mean, you can kind of think of them as lanes. They're basically like three slots, three vertical slots in the middle of the of the field. You have six rounds. Each round you start with energy. So it's like one energy, first round, two energy, the second round. And then you have cards. The cards have an energy cost and then they have a power and then some of them have abilities. And basically you're playing cards on a location to put your power level on that location. And then the other person plays their cards on that location to put their power level. So like they, you have a power level three in the center. They have a power level two in the center. That means you're controlling the center. And at the end of the game, whoever is controlling the most locations, which is two out of three or three out of three locations, AKA you have the most power on that location wins. And, and it's, it's a pretty interesting, like relatively simple premise, but there's some really cool abilities, you know, like I think Iron Man's was, he has zero power, but your total power for that location is doubled. And then the locations themselves, they reveal throughout the match. I think it's like rounds one, two, and three, or one, two, and four that the locations get revealed. So you can play on a location and not know what's going on. And then all of a sudden the location gets revealed and it says like it's, all cards here, minus one power or something like that. Based mm-hmm. off how you're describing it, it sounds like a board game that's IRL called Smash Up because the, you have like hubs uh, yeah. that you're trying to like, like you're trying to like power yeah. up essentially. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Um, and so it's cool. It's just I feel like there was kind of two problems I had with it. Um, number one is it's it's very flashy, not not like bad flashy, but it is flashy. So you're like playing cards and they're like, I'm fucking Spider Man over here. And then like the cosmetic <laughs> unlocks, like you upgrade a card and it's like frame break. Now your picture's outside the fucking card frame, and it's just like. New location, and I'm like, I don't know, just like fucking take all those graphics out. Like, I love Slay This Fire, I love Monster Train. Like, you give me a game that has like solid card mechanics, I'll play the shit out of it. But if you're just gonna fucking like blow my eyelids off every two seconds, then I don't want anything to do with it. And um, the other part is just a little bit of the UX is weird, where it's like you have to constantly like hover over cars to see their abilities and stuff. And it's not oh. awful, but it's it's just enough for me to be like. I think I just don't like playing card games on the phone. That could be it. I, I think it's on PC and, and phone. It is. It's on so, Steam. I just looked. Yeah. So, I, I mean, wow. if you're interested in that, maybe take a shot. I hear people saying that like the mechanics are really good. I don't think the gotcha is that bad. Although pretty much as soon as I got out of the tutorial, there was like four currencies I was exposed to. I don't know which ones were paid or not. And, I, and so I was just like, I this, s- I don't know, man. I, I saw know. Ben Parker as a card, and he already has my favorite effect. Like when he dies or something like that, Spider Man gets summoned or some shit. Yeah, what? Uh, it's, that's yeah. Awesome. I saw that too. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny. It's funny <laughs> stuff. It, yeah. So that's it's the thing is that like terrible. if you if you're into that and you can you can tolerate like the mechan the like flash and stuff I was talking about, then yeah, sure, play it. It's free. Go ahead and give it a shot. It's just uh, wasn't for me. 
and I'm a sucker. Uh, The last game I want to talk about is a strong game of the year contender. We're talking about the case of the Golden Idol. We talked about this last week. Jason, have you heard anything about this game? Get it up. Um, This game went under the radar until I, I think it came out like end of August. And then I saw a bunch of reviews pop up for it in on Twitter, like last what? week. And then, and people were basically like, this is like, this, game. this is like a really good, like, this is like the best mystery game, et cetera, et cetera. And it looks so cool. And I was like, I want to play that. And then Will played it last week and he talked about how good it was. And I was like, okay, I want to play this. And I sat down and I, I think I beat this in two sittings or three sittings. Like I did like a 40 minute setting and then I had to do something and I played it for an hour before work. And then that night I played it like, f- like three, four hours straight. Like this game, again, just the recap, it's a point and click adventure game. Um, but basically you are presented with the scene. The scene is typically comprised of multiple different uh, screens in a location. There's little blinking highlights that tell you where to click. You can turn those on or off. They're on by default and you click it and it like opens up and it says like this guy had this in his pocket. And as you start to click on those things, you'll get underlined words and you click on the underlined word and it goes in your little dictionary at the bottom. You're not your dictionary, but like your word list. And then to solve right. the mystery, you have this thinking screen and the thinking screen is like, it's like kind of like an ad lib. It's literally saying like, Blank blank went to blank to blank, but then ran into blank who then killed blank blank. And you're like, what? But then you have the you have you have all these words. You get like 25 to 40 words per case. And then just looking around, looking at all the little clues and piecing it together, you're like, oh yeah, this guy went to this guy to get the to get the book, and then he killed this guy because I can see he's surprised here. And like I, I don't want to talk about it anymore because it's just fucking incredible. Just play that it's fucking so game. Is it that short though? Uh, that's the only thing I'm worried about. It's like it's you like said 40 minutes and you sat there for like an hour or two. Is that is that what no, I'm no, getting no. for? No, no, no. Total like a, total is probably like what five five I six think hours. Five point seven hours was my total. Let me tell I, you, it's it's incredible. It's it is very very very. Good. It is like over twenty. I was like, okay, for like an indie game, I, I that's my only hesitancy with it. It's. Am I am I it's, getting my I, I'm getting my money's worth though if I if I do yes, get I think it? so okay. yeah it's it's, fun. it's kind of like inscri- it's kind of like inscription where yeah. you go where you go I mean the playtime wasn't that long no it wasn't but then, actually then, but then you realize this game was so fucking incredible that if it was thirty minutes long I feel like I would have gotten my worth like it's such an incredible okay. experience okay. yeah um and I and not to spoil it but just to say it also does a really good thing where you think this is a murder mystery game. And then you start to go through the cases and then you're just like, no, this is so much more. The story goes some places, the way it lays everything out. You're just like, this is incredible. It's so, very, 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 very good. I think I'm an idiot, but there was something I didn't realize until the epilogue. So there was there was one thing like that for me. Did you have to do any hints at all or did you get everything? I never used any hints throughout the entire thing. There was one thing in like the ninth or tenth case, the ninth case that I had to look up because I had one word wrong and I was like, I know that's the right word. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, and it was something that I hadn't caught. That is probably what you're kind of talking about. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil it, but let's just say it's it's not it. Look, nothing against Ace, Ace Attorney or anything like that, but it's not like here's a case. Here's a case. Right, here's right, a case. Right. Yeah, it's not like, what, yeah, there is okay. a, a building a thread. And a yes, and an incredible narrative through all and of like, it. So by the time you get to the well, end of it, you're just like, a lot of Ace Attorney fans that said there's no narrative over those games. <laughs> That's if fine. You, with not like this. Well, not like this. I should not say like there's no narrative within yeah, yeah, yeah. the cases, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I will say the other thing is like you learn characters, so if you remember their names, like it you can just name them in yeah. the next thing and all that sort of stuff. Um yeah, I, I put it on my wish list. This is the game. I, it's this good. is what local chat's for. I just find games that it's, my home, my homeboys fucking like, suggest. I, I put them on my wish list. It's, it's what happened with Inscription last year. It was like early October, and people were like, "Hey, this game's pretty like cool." That game it's is really good. Sh-. That game is and good. I, yeah. And I played it, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" This came out of nowhere. This is game of the year contender. And Case of the Golden Idol is a very, very strong game of the year contender. It, well, well, what category would you put it in if it was just a category though? Is like that's a good that's a like, that's a puzzle fair game? question. Yeah, I would yeah, assume puzzle. so. I would put puzzle. It's like you ever play Oberdin? I've seen Return it. Played, Oberdin. So yeah, that, it's that game, but similar. Similar. Okay. basically, um, it probably could. It probably could be like indie or puzzle game. Then, in all honesty, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there was yeah. a whole thing 
and I because I know what you're talking about. The my understanding of the final case didn't click in until I f figured out the thing from the epilogue, and Maybe then I'll... I was like, "Oh, that's why that happened!" Like I gotcha. was so confused yeah. through the entire mission as to why it was the answer, and then afterwards yeah. I was like, "Oh, I'm an idiot." So yeah, fantastic game, you, case the golden idol. Don't you love when you just find games like that, and like in the description, you're like, "Holy fuck!" Like this is just yeah. super good, and it's not like yeah, a, I, a super triple A titles that everybody's flocking to. So yes, I literally saw yes. Jason Schreier tweet about it. And I was like, oh, okay, so I put it on my wish list. And then, like, that night, I was like, I want something. I want to play something. Cool, and I couldn't yeah. get it out of my mind, so I just bought it and booted it up. Yeah. Yeah. It looks it's, very cool. It's, it's um, like, like, just to be selfish for a little bit, I, you know, people accuse me of being a contrarian. And I think that's, <laughs> just I think that's valid. <laughs> Well, it's not valid because a contrarian is somebody who hates things just because other people like them. The problem is I have very high standards. <laughs> So like I'm like ninety percent okay. of the games I play, I'm okay. like it's either shit or okay, right? And uh, and you know that gets to me. That gets to me. Hey. Where I'm I'm like I'm like you know what? Maybe I am being too hard on hey. these games. But every now and then I play something like Inscription or Case of the Golden Idol, and I go, no, I was right all fucking along. Why can't all games be this fucking amazing? Savor it. This is the same guy who said Awakening is a good game. So that means if he has high standards, that means Awakening oh, has to be yeah. a good game. It's That's how it works. It's a good game. This good game. Ian Gibson's the man I had to explain that when I yeah. said something is like good or the best or I like it doesn't mean it's good. It means I just enjoy it. <laughs> I remember saying that too, and you were like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're an idiot. I got it. No. Oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, but really, it's it will blow your socks off. You I'm play gonna, that I'm, game I'm and you're gonna, just like I'm gonna get it and play it. I was, people were myself, you weren't talking honestly. about it, Ian, and I was afraid, like, oh no, does he not like it? Like, but then you beat it, and I was like, oh, Maybe it's called professionalism. Like it. It's called professional. I wait until I don't have. Chat. We don't have that. What are you fucking talking about? We're we're locals. <laughs> we're locals. If we were if we were professional, would be the professional like chat, Look. the like local chat, dude. It'd be group chat, I save, sponsor chat, I, or something like that. <laughs> I save my hot takes and nine eleven jokes for every yeah, Thursday night. Sure, sure, right? sure, man. <laughs> Scribbling them down. <laughs> no, that was not good. That was okay. not good. Um, there's no news, I mean, right? There's, there's no there's news. No, I, do no we news. not even play the news theme this week? What do you want to talk about with the news? We can if you want, but I don't. I. I mean, I saw the things like I read it like over briefly. Okay. Yeah, we can talk over the news thing. We it's... we we could talk about the entire news, which is <laughs> Witcher's getting an Unreal Five Engine remake. Callisto Protocol. They're not going to release it in Japan because they didn't want to censor it. And uh, uh, Rocksteady co-founders left, but who really knows what that means for the studio? Because Gotham Knights done sucked. Because Gotham Knights was oh my, I Wait, that's hilarious. Was, Gotham Knights, was that Rocksteady? No, no, no. I thought no. no I think they're no, survival, no, 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 no. or no. It was somebody else. It, it, it was wasn't. I, I just squad. mean Suicide Squad. Isn't that yeah, what I just on? mean it was so bad that the people who made the Arkham games quit. <laughs> yeah, it was. I've heard a lot of. I've heard. I don't think it's actually related. I've heard a lot of rough things about it. Yeah, I've it's, seen yeah, some yeah. Seen yeah. some gameplay. I'm like, ah, ah, that's that's kind of rough. I think yeah. Gamespot they, gave it a four. <laughs> <laughs> they fucked up they fucked up um Arkham Knight with like yep. the exact same problem where it was like it ran poorly and wasn't that good. Yeah. You don't want to be compared the to the thing. Avengers. We'll say it like but, that. It's yeah, you're not even, a good thing. Uh a guy uh my coworker Greg, he just played it cuz he had to capture he wanted to capture 60 versus 30 on console and he played it for like an hour and he's a big Batman guy and he, even he was like it's like they took a mobile game and then made it oh. can't run on mobile anymore. He I, said yeah. half the screens feel like they were built as mobile touch screens. That that's what I've heard. Yeah. You can bash the gameplay all you want, but like it just doesn't run really like well, like efficiently at all. Like for yeah. cat like for he, FPS is what I heard. The so. way he got it to capture 60 frames a second was he streamed the game to his Steam Deck and recorded that's, it on his PC because it went 60 on the PC, but I don't know something weird when but he just he, played he it on his PC. On the PC. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. do it, so he streamed it, and it somehow caught in six. I mean, that's news that that game sucks. So there we go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Witcher is funny because, like I said, CD Project Red is going down the path of, oh fuck, we will at least a, like a game that was like questionable in quality. We got to go back to something that's like gonna get us money yeah. back again. Like, yeah. Uh, but but to be fair, like um, Jeff Grubb on, on Giant Bomb was talking about this how. Um, like this whole video game adaptation into TVs and movies, et cetera, is turning out to be a very profitable path 
because oh, yeah. it drives it drives game sales. Like just think about Cyberpunk Edge Runners came out Last and all of, of a sudden that game got spiked. Last of Us, they wanted to have that remake yeah. out to capitalize on the on the new series when that comes out. And, and I think this is a perfectly fair remake because the Witcher 1 game That's oh, fine. It's uh, good. They're good games. I'm not bashing it's that. It's just funny no, no, that they go back that. to the thing. Yeah. It's just sorry. that it's it's dated and it and it and it had some issues is my understanding. And so like like it, it also, needs a remake if people want to go back to play it. The Witcher 1 is my favorite Witcher game too and I I played it the reason I didn't like 2 and 3 is cuz I liked 1 so much. And so I'm excited for a remake. I, I thought one played well when I played it a couple years ago. It's one of those games like New Vegas that I supposedly have 30 hours in, but do not remember anything about it, um, which is literally Tetris, I have 30 hours. Pikmin in. 3, New Pikmin Vegas, 3. RimWorld. Um, so that's crazy. But just like um, what, what you were saying about uh, they can make things based like TV shows and stuff. It's funny. It's like the opposite of hey, we made this movie, let's make a game about it. Now it's like, hey, we made a game, let's make more money by making a movie and a TV show and a book. Like, it's flipped itself around. But then, but then the second part is, because we're coming out with the adaptation, let's re-release right. the original now so we can get that bounce money. Yeah, totally. And it's smart. Like, uh, this company that's doing the um, uh, the remake, they are... they've helped out on a lot of games mostly crpgs they remastered a couple a couple games so i think like they've remastered a couple uh crpg games so i think this is the right avenue for them to like reach out and be like hey we're not quite making an entire game on our own but we're not just making an enhanced edition we're making a remake so i think that's a good test for this um i don't i don't mind when games are remade in an effective manner i, I think that's a, a, a thing that a path people go down the wrong way of bashing games that are remade no if it's a good fucking game and yeah. it's yeah. outdated it's, or something like that. Remake it. Like I wish Saints Row years. did that instead of fucking whatever yeah. the fuck it did. Just make remake right. one and two. Fifteen That's years for PC hardware and graphics is a long time. Yeah. As opposed to five years between the PS4 and PS5 for Horizon is not a long time. Yeah. So why are you remaking that game? Um or remastering that game. Uh and then finally, Fallout 4 is getting a next gen in 2023. They announced that during their 25 Anniversary Fallout. Yeah, I don't care that much actually. Is and this, then it's is, Somerville. Is Fallout Four is not the new Skyrim, right? Like it doesn't have enough no, popularity no, 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 no. to carry the ports. It's Skyrim yeah. is still the new Skyrim. Um, yeah, that's fair. Somerville launches November fifteenth. This is from the. Uh, I believe he was. He's the was worst he's executive art producer. I think he was executive producer of Inside and Limbo. Well, it's Inside a town in South Carolina as well. So. And Massachusetts. Yeah. That's what it oh. is. Uh, <laughs> So that's coming can out 11 15 Can you fucking imagine if Game of the Year was like some weird, like interactive project dropped by a municipality? <laughs> what? Oh, I get what you're, you're saying. You're like, yo, <laughs> yo, you gotta check, you gotta check out <laughs> Portland.gov. It's fucking it's like if, Jesus God. It's like if Sneak King won Game of the Year. <laughs> Or like yeah. one of those Monopoly You're pack-ins. Like, Look, you gotta like caveat it. Be like, this is not a joke. You have to play this game. This is real. I think there's a brand out there that could make an incredible game. And like, if I had millions of dollars as a brand, I would find an indie studio. I'd shop around at them, find a really good game, and just convert it a little bit to like Wendy's and just be like, here it is, and it's just oh, like so you're you're a '90s so developer good. then. You're a yeah. '90s and 2000s developer. Yeah. I mean, they're very they're very close to that though. With um all the like, what was Pepsi it? Man, it was, what are you fucking talking about? No, no, I mean like <laughs> Sephora <laughs> and Walmart and Nerf and Sonic doing all the Roblox worlds, <laughs> where oh, they spend yeah. all this money on building their super ultra branded Roblox experience. Did you see the Walmart like VR metaverse <laughs> like getting there? And she put the there. gallon of milk in. And she's like, I don't think you need that. We have a gallon at home, and I just want to be like, I need two gallons. <laughs> <laughs> let me drink my milk a virtual that's, woman that's a series is like predators of the multiverse and we just go around harassing people in the and, and that's predators a series the metaverse. okay yeah sure, sure, sure. Around in the metaverse I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that whatever somebody uh creates that idea and i see it and it wasn't you guys i'm filing for uh some kind of fucking i'll get my lawyer on it right away yeah 
<laughs> gotta get those. We gotta get those views. Uh, even if they're from the FBI, I'm gonna hit the outro song. Gentlemen, this was a genuinely nice episode of Local Chat. I feel like uh, the entire time I was erect, I don't know about you two, uh, in my chair, erect, and I had a heart on. Uh, so uh, it's fun. Local Chat, Jason, Ian, thanks for being here. It's no nice problem. to have you. I'm gonna add that uh, lost. Edolion. I don't know how to pronounce it. They said it in the game before, and I still don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like when you watch a TV show after reading the books, and you realize yeah. you pronounced oh, all wow. the things like, wrong. No, 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 no. They're pronouncing it wrong. Sure. Well, what I like in the Wheel of Time books, there's a index at the back that Wheel has pronunciations Tim. in it, which Wheel is like Tim. super helpful. Wheel of Tim. Sorry. <laughs> Wheel of Tim. <laughs> In case the footage against me goes out, that like, oh, this guy hates three houses. I don't. It's just in comparison to other ones. I you don't thinking. clip that. That's all I want to say. Don't no, just no, no, clip. No. He hates three I do, houses. I do hate three houses. Though, That's fine. So. You can. That's fine. Should I play? But, should I play Persona now that it's on Xbox? I don't know that you're ready for it, honestly. I don't think. So. I don't think you're ready for it. I don't, I don't think know. you're ready I'll for anything, Will. It. You got I'm a lot of games to play, man. Too many games. I've been filling out my Notion. Uh, spreadsheet with all of my games and I have like completed section and replay section and backlog it's super fun I'm having a blast with it getting organized um, folks you can find our content subpixelfilms.com we'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel uh, you can find Jason on Twitch and Twitter at the green eight ball yes sir yes, and you can sir, find sir. Ian underneath your bed ready to please you we'll see y'all next week Trarian time let's go